During the same year the first iPhone was released and Prince played Purple Rain at a halftime show where it literally rained, another bit of culture was changed forever. The first Assassin's Creed was released. Not everyone loved Ubisoft's approach to stealth and action, but it was widely agreed that this game was onto something. In the 15 plus years since, its many sequels traded stealth for something far bigger and flashier, but lost sight of the very spirit of how it began. Assassin's Creed Mirage takes a lot of important, imperfect steps to get back to its roots. It's not the most ambitious of games, but it does restore hope that there's still room for a version of Assassin's Creed that we haven't seen in almost a decade. <laughs> Stealth is king again in Mirage. Ubisoft has done away with XP and levels entirely, meaning every enemy is just a hidden blade away from doom if you play your cards right. It's refreshing to approach a scenario and weigh options for tackling it based on its many moving parts, rather than simply considering if the loot is worth it. If he gets in my way again, I will kill him myself. Early on especially, the threat of fighting multiple enemies at once is so daunting that using sharp timing in the environment is a necessity. Even more than in the pre-Origins games, it's important to make vigorous use of precariously hanging dock supplies or conveniently place spice bags to cause enough chaos to cover your moves. Our character for this relatively short Assassin's Creed adventure is Basim, Eivor's mysterious frenemy from Valhalla. He's… fine. But after over 20 hours spent learning the leading man's history, it hasn't really made him more interesting most of the time. His origins as a plucky cut purse with a heart of gold turned vengeful assassin feels like the most fast-forwarded Hidden One story in the series. It is no inconvenience to stand up to our oppressors as the Hidden Ones do. Before the blood from his slain friends dries, he's trust falling into haystacks and chopping his own finger off. <laughs> By the end, it's still a mystery how this guy became the scheming triple-crosser we met years ago. That said, Bossom's story is far shorter and more linear than those of the recent Witcher 3 inspired games, and the adventure is better for it. These are not strong leads, but they are a start nonetheless. Your main tasks start on the investigation board, a web of leads and clues that all point towards the main targets. Solving smaller issues often lead you to bigger reveals, which in turn take you further and further up the chain until you get to take another stab at the big conspiracy that's causing all this commotion. Admittedly, the board makes things feel more open-ended than they truly are, but breaking the stories into little chunks that keep expectations clear and concise does wonders for the pacing of a game like this. Of course, when he came to us, he was little more than a common thief, scrambling to survive on the streets of Baghdad. Though it is more focused, Bossom's quest is pretty lackluster in relation to the other games in the series when it comes to surprises and twists. Something big is happening soon. I do not know what. Save for maybe the final four or so hours, his hunt to track down members of the villainous Order of the Ancients is rather basic and predictable. Each of them and their flunkies are staunchly, almost cartoonishly evil without any nuance, and are a disappointing reminder that we haven't had another big bad as complex as Haytham Kenway or as cackling mad as Rodrigo Borgia in years. With the exception of Basim's own master Roshan, brought to life expertly by Shorei Agadashlu's distinctively smoky voice, Your day to display your prowess will come, but this day belongs to Basim. The supporting cast of Mirage is no more than adequate, both as characters and in their performances. Seek me out when your voice begins to break. Then we will talk. Among the best characters, though, is the city of Baghdad. The different districts, from the dense, bustling heart and the round city, to the dusty slums in Karch, feel busy and lived in in a way that hasn't been present in the series in a while. It's full of busy streets, full of people to blend in with, and city blocks with open homes you can sprint through while eluding pursuers. Things you'll be doing a lot thanks to Mirage's notoriety system. It's a throwback to the Ezio days that scales up the efforts to take you down based on how many beehives you're kicking around town. Hey, you! Hold the moment. It gets very tough to escape guards' lines of sight simply by running. If you can't hide, removing wanted posters and paying off town criers can help to clear your name. I need to get rid of these. That said, there are no singular moments or landscapes in Mirage that really make a big impression like the Great Pyramids in Origins or Athena's statue in Odyssey. On the whole though, the golden, rolling dunes and tropical oases are beautiful, and the city and its suburbs have plenty of alleys and nooks to explore if collectible hunting is your thing. Ubisoft's renewed focus on a smaller region has allowed it to flesh out more of the details, and that's a win.
Another thing that really shines in Mirage is your set of tools, especially when you upgrade them to increase effect ranges or have dramatic additional effects. This one dissolves the bodies of anyone you kill with a throwing knife, destroying all evidence of the deed. Realistic? No. But extremely useful. Bossim also has a special stealth kill combo ability that functions almost like Deadeye and Red Dead Redemption. It's powerful, but balanced by the need to charge a special meter by performing quiet kills the old-fashioned way, and that it can only be activated when you're anonymous. The locations you infiltrate here aren't exactly better or more interesting than we've seen in recent years, though. If you've slunk through one hardened location in an Assassin's Creed game, you'll be well equipped for the sorts of hallways, underground docks, and fortified walls you'll need to tackle here. Guards are still pretty easy to manipulate and lack basic self-preservation skills when spotting any uncovered corpses you leave behind. It makes up for a lot that there are some new and returning ways to sneak into and soften up the fortifications. Bribing a merchant to let you pretend you're one of their helpers delivering goods is a great way to saunter through a gate you wouldn't be allowed in otherwise. In a later section, many different parties are congregating in the courtyard of a wealthy target's manor, and helping a group of indentured people riot against their captor can cause enough of a commotion to lure the big man into a trap. That sort of approach makes the world feel more alive and real, and takes cues from fellow stealth assassination games like Hitman. When you have no choice but to openly scrap, combat is more limited than it's been in recent games, but still challenging. Bossom only has one style, using a sword and dagger to become a spinning dervish of death by weaving quick and heavy strikes together for short combos. You can switch between many types of swords and daggers, each having unique combat abilities you can mix and match, but the differences between them is rarely so impactful that they'd make you want to change up your playstyle around them. However, it's easy to see a scenario where some fully upgraded weapons and armor sets could be more vital at a higher difficulty than the standard one. The pace of combat is jarringly slower and more deliberate than we've become accustomed to, especially coming from Valhalla's bevy of weapon types and special attacks, but Mirage certainly has its charms. There's heavy emphasis on counters and dodging incoming attacks, enforced by the sometimes erratic attack patterns from enemies mixed with the high damage they do in melee. Attackers don't wait for their friends to be cut down before taking their turn to come at you, so you often need to avoid multiple swings at once, and engaging more than two or three guards at a time can be oppressive. There are very few enemy types, but the saving grace is that regular and heavy soldiers can vary slightly based on the weapons they have. You always have to be aware and adjust accordingly, and I never found myself wanting for new challenges. For as much of Mirage's design feels like a callback to old eras of the series, combat feels like the biggest change that's unique to this game, and it works very well. Another thing that's been scaled back and focused is Mirage's ability tree. The three branches are focused on killing, scouting, and gadgets, but they only have seven skills apiece to unlock, but each one has a much more dramatic impact on how you'll want to play. Some simply help you do the things you can already do, but better. Some feel like features that existed by default in older games, but they're all worth the skill point they cost, and there's no commitment since you can respec all of these points at any time for free. You're only ever a couple of minutes away from a new character build. Assassin's Creed Mirage's return to the stealthy style that launched the series doesn't do everything right, but everything it does feels like it was done with purpose. This means a shorter game with a smaller map, fewer collectibles, smaller scope in combat, and a limited selection of gear to play with, all of which is refreshing relative to the arguably bloated scale of 100-hour games like Odyssey and Valhalla. It also means an overly simplistic plot with mostly forgettable characters. But what the story lacks in depth, it makes up for with its straightforward quest progression and fast pacing. Though there's no big standout wow moment, Baghdad is a beautiful location in its own right, and the world's detail is focused inward, making every alley and hovel feel well-traveled and full of detail and history. It's easy to recommend Mirage to anyone who's lapsed on Assassin's Creed, as its Back to Basics approach is a successful first step in returning the feeling that the earlier industry-defining games gave us so long ago. For more, Check out our reviews of Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty and Lies of P. And for everything else, stick with IGN. Strong.